This is a video on VRChat avatars and their market. But before I start, I want to ground us. Hey, traveler. Hum? Can I ask you a question? Of course. Ever heard of VRChat? No. Oh. We are a small, small community on the far side of the Steam page. Sometimes it may seem like VRChat is huge as your YouTube page is filled with it, but that's just the algorithm knowing your interests. Most people don't know the game. You know what VRChat is? And even if they do, they don't play it. I do not play VR chat. And yet, even with the game and this community being so small, within our niche, we have plenty of creators who are able to make a living off of creating and selling assets, avatars, maps, and services, all within this game called VR chat. I don't, I don't think he owns that car. Sorry. <laughs> Today I'm going to interview a whole lot of avatar creators, trying to get to the bottom of the avatar market, its in and outs, how it works, and how they make their money, how others could get into doing what they do, and the problems within it, from every perspective I can find. Zimpia. Hello. Hi. Remy. Hello. How you doing? Bunny. Mm -hmm. Hi. Clarence. Oh, what? Oh, the star is. Googie. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cupcake. Oh, God, we're starting. Boone. <laughs> Mars. Hey, I'm Virtual Threads. Castell. Hello. How are you doing? Jinxie. Yep, hello. Oh, hey. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm driving. Come, come, come closer. Come on, like, sit right there. No, no, gee. <sighs> There, there. Avatars, what are they though? Well, it's the character you play as. No matter what you feel like being, there's a million different styles you could choose from. Tearing an avatar apart, limb from limb, we notice that almost every single one is comprised of a few building blocks. A base, a head, hair, clothes, and then whatever extra stuff is added on top. So you have all these individual parts. And as creators, you have the option of making all these parts yourself and then putting them together or buying different parts and and piecing them together like lego but it's but it's body parts do i see so many snails in there are they hermit crabs i don't know so how is it that people get into making these assets and avatars in the first place though furries I'm not joking. I was interested in designs, like furry designs, and that's what brought me into like set making 3D models. Back in 2018 or so, we couldn't favorite avatars. There were not many avatars. You had to go to another world to pick an avatar if you wanted to change. And the ones that were were just not representing what I wanted to look like. I started 3D modeling way, way before Vyachan. I was making stuff on IMVU. I originally made stuff for Second Life, actually. It started as a hobby. I just wanted to uh, edit my original avatar. Started off just editing things for myself. Mainly because I wanted to just like make my own personal avatars to wear because I didn't really like anything. So the only way for me eventually was to learn things myself. So I started editing and then kind of transitioned into making full avatars or assets. I started to do many avatars like for myself. I had a friend and we both like started learning together. I used to have a friend. I have a friend. I had a friend called Cheese. People wanted to commission me for some assets or uh, some textures. I saw my stuff being used on VR chat and I was like, what the heck? Wait, how are they doing that? How are they taking my stuff and putting it on this game? I was like really mad about it at first, but then I joined. That was in 2018. 2018. Uh, 2019. 2020? 2021. And voila, here I am. Thank you, furries. Always the furries. But let's say you don't know anything about how to get around doing this stuff. You want to, but the only creative programs you have any experience with is Paint and Windows Movie Maker. Let's try and help you with that. So when making avatars, generally, what, what programs do you use? I use the usual. Mainly three programs or two, like Blender. 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 You always start at Blender and then Substance Painter. Substance Painter. Substance. Substance Painter. Substance Painter. Gimp, Photoshop, or Substance. And then finally, 
back into you know unity to package everything unity 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 you know the basics usually oh yeah 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 basics so you have the programs but step by step what's the process to make an avatar for these people though well it starts with the idea but usually online like pinterest pinterest for like hours and hours and hours the concept recently i've been using ai try to like pull different like little aspects of from you get a bunch of pictures like kind of like a mood board then you get the parts go look for assets either you make assets yourself in blender or you look for assets online like jinxie or something and if i can't find anything i just make it from scratch and you put it together and then i'll go to blender but when you put it together Together, like mentioned before, you have the option of using assets other people made. What is a kitbash avatar? Kitbashing is like uh, taking other people's assets and like just putting them together. But if you spend any time in VRChat communities, you'll hear people bash on kitbash stuff. So why is there so much hate towards kitbash avatars online? I have no idea. I think kitbashing is great, so I don't know. I, th I think that stems from a perceived lower quality aspect of it, that inherently it must be easier to put together a bunch of other things, slap them together in Unity and push it out. A kitbash, let's say you don't sell avatars, right? Let's say you sell lemonade. A kitbash lemonade would be a lemonade made with lemons that you bought on the store. You bought them, you made your lemonade and put it to sale. A from scratch lemonade would be someone that grew their own lemons at home. Lemons grew and they made their lemonade. That doesn't mean that the person that bought the lemons from the store did a bad job or that it had less effort to make them. You could argue a difference in effort, but in the end, that really doesn't matter. What really matters is how good the lemonade tastes, right? Exactly right. In fact, I interviewed my good friend Hudson to see just that. It doesn't... It's like the straw does Hudson! <laughs> Do you even care as a consumer if an avatar is kitbashed or not? Honestly, as a consumer, I'm just looking for a good avatar. I, I couldn't give a shit. Surely, with all these avatar creators, they must have some inside knowledge that would help a newer creator. Someone who's just starting out or who wants to get into doing this, what advice would you give to them that they probably just wouldn't find looking up normal YouTube tutorials? So for someone starting out, I'd be more concerned about learning the programs and the fundamentals. Because of new versions of the different programs like Blender and Unity and a lot of different things like shaders, a lot need to learn. A lot of people kind of start backwards. Learn the software for the software. Don't learn the software for creating stuff for Biachan. They'll end up buying avatars and wanting to edit them. And they'll want to do things like swapping the heads and their hairs or putting different clothes on them. Everyone starts kit bashing, but I would recommend start learning the tools you're using. I would say like joining communities is probably the biggest thing. Become an apprentice for another avatar creator because they already know the whole process. Find communities that have artists that are kind of doing the same thing you're doing, join them, and you guys can all like work together, learn off each other. A lot of avatar creators are willing to share the knowledge, but some of them like the gatekeep. Just be prepared to like invest a lot, a lot of time and energy and effort into this whole thing. I'm a, I'm a floating lemon. Definitely the biggest advice for everyone who's getting into the creative space in general, not just avatars or worlds, but even video production and other creative avenues is to learn the program first. God, for the last video, I spent six hours learning After Effects before I could even try and do the edits I wanted to do. And that was just like putting this stuff on the video screens. Avatars are the same. Maybe not avatars like this, but in general, you know, use the programs with, for, for what they're meant to be used for. And this is a personal gripe, but actually know your worth. If it's your first avatar and it's generally not up to par, don't charge the going rate of $35. So how much do you charge for your avatars and, and why? Oh gosh, uh, it varies. It really varies, honestly. $18 to like $40, $50. It depends on the avatar, I guess. I started uh, my avatars like $30 a piece and now I moved to 35. Kind of hover around 35, 40, 45 if there's extras. My avatar range is 
50, 60 euros. I do everything from scratch. It takes a real long time to do. I do charge 60 dollars. But I do understand that some people can't afford that. So I have set up in my shop the regional thing. It basically prices the avatar down depending on where you live. Like my body bases, I think run 25 bucks. A pair of pants, I think my highest maybe 10. You know, you gotta have a lot of content for that. Textures that people can choose from. I started off with selling full outfits for 20 five US dollars. Typically I aim for seven dollars for a personal license to nine dollars for commercial. The reason being is that while I have been doing this for a long time, I don't really have an established brand. I have to give them a reason to buy my product and usually pricing something lower is a good way to entice them. I try to look at what other creator price their stuff at so that I don't go too high or too low. I just looked around at what other people were selling for. If I want to compete with prices that's already out there, I'll range my stuff around that. Even if the quality is good, bad, you know. You know, now when it comes to assets and prices, there are individuals who sell these assets at a certain price, and in the rules for a commercial license, they require you to sell anything you make out of those assets uh, to, to then be sold at a higher price than the asset you originally bought. This would be so people can't buy the thing with that asset and rip it out to use it for cheaper than the original cost, right? Seemingly, it's a good idea. I don't know about that. I could care less. I could care less. I personally... I don't mind that much, no. I feel a lot of asset creators kind of get the idea of wrong when it comes to uh, having their stuff leak. Conversely, from avatars, which are directly affected, assets, I think the majority of people buying are legitimate creators or other avatar creators. And so, realistically, when something leaks and it gets really popular uh, and someone sees that and wants to license it for whatever reason, you're going to get a lot more hits on that. There's some assets I have that don't allow an entire free model for a body base to not be cut because anyone can just use that base on a free model and say they bought it. I came into VR chat with people taking my stuff. So my thoughts are completely like, I don't care. As long as I have, you know, people who appreciate my work and, you know, decide to give money to me for my work, that's great. I made my money that I wanted to make with that asset. What other creators make, it's like their creation. They have the right to price their stuff the way they want. I don't mind. Now, some creators can take this a step further. Forget just making people price things at a certain level. Some avatar creators don't or didn't even let you edit their avatars in the first place. And I interviewed one of them. So you in the past, I've heard this has changed, but you, you didn't allow people to edit your avatars. Why was that? Um, honestly, it's because I like I'm an artist. I've been drawing and creating art since I was like a little kid. Character design and creation is like one of the main things I'm like very passionate about and like I love doing. Seeing other people just like edit the shit out of my avatars makes me kind of sad, I guess, at a point because of this, at some point people go so far, it just, it doesn't look like my avatar anymore. It doesn't look like my creation anymore. So I'm like, why did you even buy my work if you don't, you're gonna edit it that much, you know? Should asset creators enforce that the products made from their assets be sold for more than the original asset is sold for? My answer, no. <laughs> As creators who are using it to make a product they'll then sell, it's a lot easier to get all the files ready for use from the original seller, you. And also get access to support if anything goes wrong as they're paying customers. You shouldn't be worried thinking people are going to rip the assets off of an avatar you made unless that avatar is completely free. Then maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I am in the, in the wrong. <laughs> but how much money are these people making? I do have to ask this. How much, how much money do you make from sales? Um yeah, I don't want to say a number, but I would definitely say that it's like more than I would get at a regular job here. I make enough to make a decent living. I've been able to, for the past few years, make an even amount to what I was working, uh, like a full-time job. Realistically, on the higher months, uh, 8,000. The lower months, you could be barely making anything at all. So that 8,000 is like what I'm making roughly. I've heard even higher numbers than that from the top people. I'm not going to say who, but I'm going to say there's a big chance to make a lot of money if you're good.
I've been releasing one avatar <laughs> once a year, so but I'm lucky to make enough to just not feel pressured into Russian avatars. I just take my time. Unfortunately, the market is oversaturated. Do you make enough money from this in order to live off of? At with my current lifestyle, unfortunately not. I don't know, my main job is uh what floats this sort of creative endeavor. <laughs> I've had people that, you know, make okay avatars that don't make anything because it's such a big selection. All right, so you can make money, but where do you make this money? When you sell, there's a lot of options of where you can sell. Where do you sell? What website? And and, and why there? Um, there's quite a big variety of websites you can use. The main one that everyone knows is Gumroad. I sell on Gumroad only. I use Gumroad. Gumroad. Gumroad is where a lot of the Western creators put their stuff as well. That's where I sell the majority of my stuff. Started with PayHip a long time ago. Uh, moved to Gumroad because they have the library function where anything you buy, you can see right there. It's ready to download again. I sell it on Selfie. I used to sell stuff on Gumroad. I mean, I still have things on there, but I don't use it. My main shop right now is Shopify. I've also like used Gumroad. People who have Shopify's and uh, that type of thing, they have a harder time getting noticed and discovered when you go on your own website versus a big one. Gumroad has something called Gumroad Discover where people can just type in like, like a, a tag, like a VR chat tag or like avatar tag. And then they, they'll just like discover a bunch of avatars. Around 90% of my sales come from people just discovering my avatar to the discovery tab. Currently, I sell my stuff on Gumroad and on Jinxie as well. Right now, I sell at Gumroad and Jinxie. Jinxie is one of the big ones already. That's an index of a lot of them. Booth is a lot of the Eastern market. You're talking Chinese, Japanese, Korean. Gumroad takes 10% flat from every purchase. There's the cut Gumroad takes. You'll also have to pay a PayPal fee, for example, if customers are buying it through PayPal. I moved to Selfie because it's more affordable and I love the customization you can do. Selfie, they have different subscriptions you can pay for. That is then a fixed amount you pay every month. You won't be paying a fee when customers are buying something. I mean, I started with Gumroad, but the reason why was because at the time it was the best option. But at the moment I am thinking about changing my store. On Jinxie, it's entirely up to the creator. Um, so it is technically, um, you can sell stuff for free, obviously disregarding any sort of processing fees or chargebacks or refunds or anything of the like. To my knowledge, right now, if you give at least 10% of a cut, you'll end up on the front page. That being said, they are, I do know that they're trying to cultivate people to stay within Jinxie, you know, market within Jinxie, make posts about stuff that lead back to Jinxie. So they're really trying to, to spur that relationship. So I, I totally get that. Now this is the point that people in the comments will yell, why didn't you interview anyone from Booth? I tried. I really did. I asked about 10 people and all but one completely ignored me. And the one who I did get some comments from was only through DMs. And that's Code, who works alongside Horinyan. I wanna know why people would choose to sell on Booth over other platforms. The owner of Gumroad is pretty disrespectful to his own staff, will make seller unfriendly policies, fire half of their entire staff and then brag on Twitter about their good sales for the day. Booth also makes paperwork very easy. Gumroad will do really weird things where they will send you your money directly and then take their cut back from you, maybe to avoid paying VAT for it. While Booth will collect your money for a month and pay it out all at once, it makes taxes very comfy. What about choosing Booth over Selfie and PayHip? I remember trying out PayHip once. The reason to not use it mainly is because there's zero traffic that's relevant to you. All the traffic you get on your store is from other websites or IM apps like Discord. If your only traffic is from another source, might as well just use the one that gives you the best cuts and has the best support. Booth has negatives too though, it's very competitive there. The market moves on much faster. A model that sells on Gumroad for three months will sell for one to two months on Booth. But of course, when it comes to websites, there's something else you need to consider. Recently, Gumroad was made to enforce not safe work policies and there was a huge shift in the creator space because of it, as a large proportion of people sell their avatars on Gumroad. Adult content on Gumroad. In accordance with the policies of our payment processing partners, including Stripe and PayPal, we do not allow sales of <coughs> explicit content. What is <coughs> explicit? VR chat avatars displayed in compromising or <coughs> positions, or avatars that advertise NSFW uses or modifications like breast expansions where the purpose of such a modification is understood to be solely for titillation. Considering the way a lot of avatars were marketed, people were not happy. I hate them. 
<laughs> no. That's why I stopped using Gamona because I don't want to risk anything basically. This is really nothing new. I get the idea. They're put on pressure from payment processors. They kind of run the whole business world. Several markets have experienced this type of deep platforming when it comes to not safe for work content, whether it be Patreon or OnlyFans. Well, it's not their fault that they are changing. It's the same issue that other websites have with more adult content. Now, I also reached out to websites to see what comments they may have on their policies, and I only got a response from Selfie and Jinxie. The rest of them, they either ignored me or they redirected me to a Q&A page. Selfie was very businesslike, answering the questions by basically stating what they already have public. Also, I sent out all these emails kind of en masse. I made a mistake sending it to Selfie and I put pay hip in the questions, but they still answered. Jinxie got a little bit more in depth answering all my questions and reassuring me that they're still gonna allow not safe for work content, which is all well and good if they didn't call me Dara Frog every time. So you, as a creator, which website should you go to? I got no clue. Jinxie, you're gonna end up on anyways, no matter where you upload. And then I guess it really depends on whether you're a known creator or not. If you are and people are gonna buy your stuff anyways, uh, maybe Selfie. The customization seems great and you get a pretty good cut. But if it's for discoverability, probably Gumroad or Booth. It really depends on what style of avatars you're making. But with all this talk about not safe for work stuff, how important really is it to the game? How big or important is the not safe for work aspect of the game? when it comes to avatar creation. Massive, it's massive. That's like, I would say like the top, maybe second, the second the most important thing in avatar. I think it's very important. It's what the consumer wants. There is a large part of the user base that consumes that kind of content or uses that kind of content. God, there's there's like latex events, there's like furry, there's a lot of events not safe for work that's involved with VR chat, so. When it comes to one person that has $30 and they have something to choose between you or something they eat Equally like, except one can do that and the other can't, then they're gonna choose the other one every time. I would say it's not as important as people think it is. I still avoid that in specific features because I'm not fully comfortable doing that. I think sussy stuff is a bit overrated. You could still be successful without it. I've had some good avatars that didn't have not safe work stuff, so pretty alright. But that's just their opinions, and they're all avatar creators. Tom. Yo, hey. Tom isn't an avatar creator. So Tom, you are a retired world-class bowler, yeah? That is true, yeah. Three years ago, I stopped, but uh, won a few, few championships in my time. Yeah, yeah, I used to watch Tom on TV. We love Tom, what the fuck? He's so good. Yeah, he used to have these compilations, dude, where he would like throw the bowling ball and it would curve at like unnatural angles and it would still hit a strike every time. It was nuts, I wouldn't believe it if I wasn't there. It was insane. I mean, the man was transcending time. So being such a big bowler, you must be popular with the ladies. Ah, of course. Look at me. Without a doubt. I, I heard he used to grip his bowling ball so hard, it would like leave deep imprints and like change the shape of the bowling ball over time to where it was like naturally more aerodynamic. And it, it was like his special technique and no one else could do it because they didn't have the grip strength. So being somebody of your sexual prowess and the fact that you play this game, how important is ERP to you? ERP, what's that? One of the biggest and most important aspects to consider as a creator is marketing. You need people to see your stuff to then want to buy your stuff. How do you market your content? <laughs> I don't. Oh, I'm so bad at marketing. You have a lot of different ways on how you can market your, your stuff. Marketing to me is super important. So what I want to do, and obviously because the mar market is quite saturated, you need to stand out. I try to reach as many platforms and people as I can. Discord, Instagram, TikTok. I, I make feature videos, dance videos. I make a bunch of images. I make a bunch of stats. I try to reach out for streamers if I can. That is also something a lot, a lot of creators do. They give their avatars to content creators, like streamers, uh, TikTokers, etc., um, to use while they're streaming or to create TikToks with them. Ooh, we gotta make things look good. For me, in order to stand out, you need to have an eye-catching image. I want to catch your attention. And while I have your attention, okay, here it is in Unity. Here is the one-to-one -one representation of what you'll get in the game. Look around. The best way is seeing what's out there, seeing how people are showing their work, and even and look outside of VR chat. Look at like Nike and magazines and all kinds of things. When you're surfing through a bunch of products, it can get very tiresome. So I'm giving you the most important pertinent information on my first app, the thumbnail. Create your own look, choose certain colors. They say three, the 
number three is good. Three different colors for your logo or brand. Being active on social medias, posting uh, Twitters, posting in Discord servers. It's all about exposure. You have your, well, of course, your own server. Uh, you have other creator server. Oh, yeah. I'm, my, I'm at the Discord server cap. It takes me almost two hours to post in every server. And most of those are avatar servers. Just a couple of them are something else. Oh, God. Discord servers. There are too many Discord servers. Okay, so I want you guys to send me as many Avatar Discord server invites as you can. Okay. Oh my god, there's already so many. Michu's Avatars, Googie's Corner, Olympus, Maple's Forest, Rising Sky, Pursuit Scratching, Soldier and Lenti's Dollhouse, Army, 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 69. I joined 69 avatar servers now. That's enough. I get Discord servers existing for a creator to be able to announce new stuff, talk about works in progress, get feedback, and most importantly, have a place customers can get support for their purchases. But that's it. I personally hate the marketplace channels in Discord, and if you ever see people selling through Discord, run. That, that is the least secure shit ever. You're gonna get fished 100%. Which brings us to the next point. There is a major problem when it comes to avatars. It is incredibly difficult for normal consumers to find good working products. How can we, as consumers, who are buying avatars or even assets, make sure we're buying a good product? I think a lot of the onus uh, is on the creator themselves. There's quite a few avatars that push your head in different proportions than what it seemed like in the selling post. And that is in the way that they market their products. Oftentimes, uh, regretful purchases stem from misleading photos or very inadequate descriptions that don't paint an entire picture of what the cut consumer is getting. I think it's very important if you're buying something that you check every single description of it, every single thing on the page. I think a lot of good quality product images, a showcase demonstrating your feature set, or a descriptive breakdown of all the possible toggles and whatnot. It's helpful when you can see videos of the avatar. If an avatar is put up for sale and they don't show you a lot of pictures, they don't show you in-game footage of the avatar, you're just seeing some pretty renders, chances are it might not look that good in game. Don't go for simple renders of images, go for a video. So there's a lot of them that I kind of regret buying just solely because of the qualities garbage yeah that's just based on the creator's skill level if you have friends who already own the avatar obviously ask other people for their opinion before you do buy it uh, ask friends or if the creator has a public version of it then uh, obviously try before if you have friends that are knowledgeable within the creator space ask them if they've heard of such a creator or whether or not someone has their work view it in game if you can the people the creators that are well known tend to be well known for a reason only buy from established creators i see a lot of people selling rips and uh you know products that didn't necessarily take a long time join the creators community uh look around you know discord servers or whatever see what's being commented or what's being said see if you can hear anything about the quality of their work does it have lots of pictures in game or like an in-game showcase seeing like how the avatar looks and moves in game and if the video has a lot of flashy editing and quick dance moves and cuts and you can't actually see the avatar be careful you want to look at what you're going to buy before you buy it first thing that kind of screams out to me is when they use gta assets or they don't list their full credit page i don't know sometimes i look at like Gumroad, for example, I look at previous work. I'll back out and then look at their other work and see if they have ratings. If there's no ratings on anything, I'm, I do kind of think, oh, maybe it's not like the best quality. Even if an avatar looks good, you should check the stats. Usually people will say the stats, like Viren, it's very important. If there is no, not, not enough information in the page, you can contact the creator and if they care and they should, they will gladly answer. And um, besides that, don't buy from Discord DMs. <laughs> Wonderful advice. Helpful and relevant for right now, but it's still lacking for the majority. Uploading a VR chat avatar is still very complex for most people. I explained how to do it in my last video, but even then, I'm sure there's some people who would never really figure it out. So there has to be a better option. And that's where VR chat and their creator economy comes in. So with the creator economy, VRChat introduced V-Bucks. You can buy stuff in, in worlds, right? They definitely want to expand that to include avatars in the future. What effect do you think that might have on the market? Yeah, I don't I don't see it being that big of an impact. Maybe just like a, 
another good option. Personally, I think it's going to be very small. They're not going to just like let anyone put avatars on the creator economy. I don't think it will be very like it will change things drastically. I feel like the the V bucks for avatar creators, the the creator market there, is probably going to be geared more towards safer work, quest users, quest avatars. VR Chan doesn't really like NSFW content because they're trying to cater towards a younger audience as well. I don't think VR Chat wants to display it at all or be seen in that way because they seem to always advertise to kid friendly. I don't think VR Chat would uh, ever allow like NSFW avatars in their market. I don't think it would be very uh, successful when it comes to those types of people. But if it's like meme avatars, I think it'd be great. VRChat is rated 13 plus. VRChat, they try things with avatar creators from time to time, but they can't actually acknowledge us. There is a creator, um, yes, very good. His things, his stuff, they are not this, you know? Those types of creators, VRChat will acknowledge happily. But creators like me, or Godfall, or Koflexa, or Lawrence, those VRChat has issues acknowledging because we do a lot of Nazi forks. Stuff. We sometimes used copyrighted material in the past and they don't have control over what we make. I am cautiously optimistic coming from Second Life and seeing what how IMVU works uh, through SUGS. It's clear that this works, like having a built-in marketplace. That being said, the issue there is that for both of those, Second Life and IMVU, they have like a, a default base that everything's built around as far as like avatars so you can sell things piecemeal like that you don't have that with vr chat that requires technical know-how on the the consumer to you know put that into unity and upload it i think a lot of people are gonna realize that there's a bigger market than it initially seems. I think, I mean, that would be sick. I think if they had that connected to Avatar Worlds, I feel like that could be a really cool thing. Right now, the only way you can get an Avatar for purchase is you have to know Gumroad exists, you have to know how to upload on Unity, and you have to know where to find the Avatar which could be a different Discord. So that makes it really, really hard for a consumer to get to you. If you could sell directly through the game, one click, you're done. Boom, it's gonna be way crazy good. I would just really be concerned about the user experience of like being able to try on the avatar before you purchase it. Like that, that is one of the primary like problems with avatar buying as a consumer is that you can't try on the avatar before you spend the money. And so if I can do that in game, then it's like already automatically 10 times better than any third party website. There's massive potential for creators to make a good amount of money when avatars become available for purchase through the game itself. And as consumers, it would be extremely helpful as we would no longer have to go to a million different websites to find the avatars we want and then upload said avatars through Unity. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows because this game is 13 plus, which means most of the features that modern avatars have, they would definitely not be allowed to be on whatever store they come out with, which is incredibly disappointing to users like me. Who, like, it would also potentially add a level of security for people who make avatars because another huge problem is people stealing your stuff. My hope is that there's a version of this where at least we can sell whole avatar packages maybe. I'm hopeful for that because that would be within their own content delivery network or maybe there'd be some sort of protections in that way because currently as it stands you have to provide all your files to a customer in order for them to get what they want. And you're relying on good faith that they won't leak it, that they won't share it. It's a good thing, but I could potentially see a lot of teething problems, but I think it's a good thing overall for the market. Right. You don't want your stuff ending up on a Ripper website. So a Ripper website, basically at its core, is a website in which people who buy an avatar then share the files to. It may seem like complex and scary because it's Ripper, but most of everything on a Ripper website is from legitimate customers who upload it. That's, that's it. Ripper websites. How damaging are they? Oh, they're like the most damaging thing to the creator community. Very damaging. They absolutely affect uh, creators. Whenever I have my stuff leaked, my sales go way down. Way, way down. The worst thing is like it affects creators like mentally, seeing like seeing your stuff getting stolen and shared around for free. One issue I might see with a site like a Ripper site is that um, it's frictionless. People will 
naturally take the path of least resistance when it comes to acquire something they might like. And they might not even know that this is something that people, other people have paid for or you're supposed to pay for. The issue is how available Ripper websites are. I mean, to an average VRChat player, maybe they don't know, but I mean, it's just like so available, very easy to access, very easy to get those avatars down. The, those platforms are so large these days. There are a lot of people that use them without even realizing. To them, it's just like, I see something cool. Someone's linking it to me or a friend does, and I'm just going to download it because I don't see I don't see any issues here. They don't advertise uh, that it's a pirate website. They advertise uh, that it's just VR chat avatars. In one scenario, I kind of look at it and it's like, wow, these Ripper websites are much more convenient in finding an avatar that are actually like suitable because for some reason they have a, just like a better UI and better like search features than like Gumroad or an average like buying thing. And they have such a larger collection that it's easier to find an avatar that you actually like. But on the other hand, you're literally stealing from creators and you're literally just taking this hard work and you're just kind of throwing it out there. Ripper stores, they will exist forever. People will always rip avatars. My audience, I'm pretty sure they know these websites exist, but they will still buy from you. People will still buy from you because they want to support this idea, because they like what they, they're getting. People that will support you, will always support you, no matter what. If you're a creator, don't worry about Ripper stores. Focus on what the people that actually support you want to see. Ripper websites are a huge problem. I understand the desire to get something for free instead of paying for it. God knows in the past I may have downloaded some vehicles, but avatars and the assets they're made of are intellectual property of someone and you getting it without paying is stealing. And worse yet, if you distribute it, that's trafficking, which, which is a crime. Will you get charged? Probably not. Will you get caught? Probably not. Uh, it really depends on whether you advertise that you're the one who did it or not. Yeah. It's the earth. Okay, but VRChat isn't the only game with an asset market. So VRChat isn't the only game with people making money from assets on it. IMVU, Second Life, those games seemingly, as far as I can tell, take better care of their creators and their creators' intellectual property. What could VRChat do better in that aspect? I mean, as I said, it's like the whole ripping and leaking problem is like the biggest thing they could actually do something about. but. I I don't think it's kind of possible to be honest. It's really hard to like counter something like that. Like no matter what game you're playing, you're always gonna have someone that's gonna, you know, hack into the game or rip something. Like like any game that ever has existed, you can rip anything from or steal. Unless a creator gets approved for their VR chat creator economy, I don't really think VR chat cares about you because you're not really making the money. The creator economy that they've been working on would be great. If we had options for uh, selling, distributing, having a storefront inside VR, people could purchase your content in-game and have it transferred directly to their account. It takes out the middleman of having to distribute files out there that people can get a hold of. But it's never going to happen for most of us because uh, VR chat's keeping it with 13 plus. Those other games, they they allow not safe for work content. When you literally sign up for IMVU, you, you're a part of it. They give you paperwork. Um, you know, you have to put in your social security number and it's like an actual job. By the time I joined in, cause Second Life is quite ancient by now, they have a very mature market for every purchase you get. You get their proprietary currency called uh, Linden dollars or L and you have the ability to extract that out and exchange that for whatever your currency may be. In order to do that though, you need to validate like yourself either through a driver's license or any sort of identifying documents. Not everyone can get it. Like you definitely, you do have to prove who you are. So you do what you make becomes IMVU. Like they put their name on it. They pretty much kind of own the assets, but like not at the same time. So yeah, you do get protection in a way, but like your chat, people can just grab it. It's a different beast altogether, actually, because their market is sort of built into the game itself, as is their own creation tool. So whatever you make literally in the game, you can sell on the market within the game itself. It's very frictionless in that regard and a lot easier to control as far as like patrolling IP infringement and making sure things that end up on the market are safe for work or within a certain community guideline. I feel like they would have to own your property to own to even legally help you. They would scare a lot of people. And a lot of people want their own little companies. I don't think VRChat 
can do anything better than what they're doing now. I feel like if VRChat was involved in that way, they would want you to display or do certain things and not put out certain things. You know what I mean? VRChat has a status quo with creators that they don't want to lose. The way the IMVU and Second Life do it stuff, they have to acknowledge people and people need to follow their precise rules. And I don't want VRChat to be that. I really don't want a place where it's very regulated because that is gonna cut dry on the creative part. Here people can actually express themselves. There is a reason why VR chat is the most played VR game and the rec room isn't. And that's because of community content. People can be whatever they want in this game. Furries, humans, ketchup bottles, lemons. But something in VR chat is incredibly jarring, and that is avatar style. You'll end up in a world and see all types of avatars, and that's fine. A lemon and a duck can be friends. But I'm talking about humanoid avies, specifically the difference between East and West, or as some people say, Booth and Gumroad. So why is there such a difference between the Eastern and the Western market in terms of style? I mean, the Eastern market has been around a lot longer than the Western market, but it also suits very different sensibilities as far as what avatars or what things are typically sold there, what people consider booth style avatars, whereas the Western market features more, I say realistic, but maybe usually anime or realistic leaning avatars. I have three boxes that I put creators in because there's three particular styles that you definitely can recognize when you see. Those are the booth models. They're very anime-like, usually lollies or chibis. Uh, there's some grown-ups. There's some cute boy avatars there, by the way, because they either make a very cute girl or super handsome boy avatar. And then uh, there's the second box, which I feel like is the one that I fit in. I would call it OG creator style because we are as well as the booth models are very anime like but we tend to go to realism but not too much so you'll see our faces are very anime our eyes are not 3d but our bodies are very super hot and well made they can both coexist i i know there's a lot of stuff on booth that people find kind of questionable in regards to you know stuff looking rather childlike you know a market's a market the open market's always good so i think the they're both going to continue to develop in their own side channels. And then there is the postmodern, which is usually most e-boys, most e-girls, but it's a style more focused on realism over anything else. So you see faces with very like protuberant lips, with 3D eyes and very defining features and realistic hair. A lot of this style creators came from IMVU, that's why they look so much alike. So there's different styles of avatars, but what do we actually think about those different styles? Come one, come all to the brand new for just what one episode, Avatar Got Talent, where we'll have multiple avatars coming out on stage and our wonderful judges will say yes or no if they would use the avatar themselves or l l like it, I guess. Starting out, we have contestant, uh, er, Avatar number one, Penguin. Uh, what, 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 what do you guys think? Ye yes or no? I give it a yes. Aww. I like that one, yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a yes. Amazing. Next up is something exotic. A trans furry. Those colors would be seen a mile away, I tell you. Okay, the colors are cool, but like the furry thing. Can I give it like a... Nah, it's a no. Uh, it's a no for me. For sure. Uh-uh. No? <laughs> really? I'm not sure I can handle the backlash. Yo! That's the one. That's a, that's a yes right there. That's it, man. Absolute yes. And that's a yes. An e-girl. Brilliant. I'm sure we won't see any more of those. Uh, uh, an another e-girl. Did we see the judge the last? Uh, this one's new. Okay. Yes. Give that a yes. And did we get a new judge? Okay, okay, I'm not sure. What the hell? Okay, we're done. Another big thing related to style is gender. Something you'll no doubt notice even from videos of VRChat, not playing it much. Browsing through the endless pit of avatars available on Jinxie, Gumroad, and Booth, scouring through the unending Discord servers, you'll notice a severe lack of male avatars, sure. But when you find one you like, and you buy it, half the time, you'll end up hating everything about it once you use it in-game. Or in my case, 80% of the time, I, I, I hate it. Why do you think there's such a discrepancy in terms of gender 
when it when it comes to avatars i feel like in in vr shed like no matter if you're a guy or girl or whatever you describe yourself as everybody just likes to wear a girl like a female avatar most of the girls who play the game wear female avatars and uh, most of the guys who play the game wear female avatars a lot of times we want to look at things that we find attractive and universally for the most part find feminine things attractive what i focus on making is i try to make an avatar that's comfortable to wear like no matter what gender you are like if you're a guy if you're a girl like whatever you whatever you want to be i also think a lot of the creative types just tend to be fe like feminine presences you tend to see more female creators than you do male creators unfortunately what ends up happening it's sort of a, a re it reinforces itself there aren't that many male avatars out there forcing some people to explore female avatars and then creators in turn might say well there's no incentive to make them because that's not what people want to wear or they're not going to wear i would say that it's a lot easier to make female models when it comes to the different clothing that you would usually see in female models i think a big part of it as well is just the variety in clothes females uh can wear i think uh guys you got like, pants shorts long sleeve shirt short sleeve shirt male models are kind of just like you know strippers male avatars they don't have many options whereas female have like way like a wider variety of like styles clothes a male just has like tech wear dress shirt and pants stuff like that you know it's like the main things for the male the experience that you'll have buying an avatar for like a female style avatar versus a male style avatar is gonna be very different good male avatars they're few and far between it's almost just right maybe you find something that looks really good but there's always something that's just a little off and you you feel like you're settling for it it depends on the artist you know who creates the avatar to them, they, they may think it's like the shit, but to others, it could be like, man, this is crap, you know? Good male avatars are so hard to find. It's like, I don't know if there's a low demand or if there's just a low like output from creators. Like they don't like to create male avatars. I mean, I've literally scrolled for like pages and pages and pages and I'll never find a, you know, just a male humanoid avatar that isn't tattooed out crazy like e-boy i don't want to dress like i'm going to a club in you know 2019 there definitely is a struggle to find a good male avatar i think my male avatar was good but i had no fun making it though that was the problem for me and it might be the reason for others to make something good you have to be passionate about it and love it and have fun with it and perhaps people just have fun making anime girls rather than male avatars. Depending on the male avatar, there's certain markets for this type of stuff. Right now, the current e-boy market is cornered by a few big creators. And basically, anyone that, you know, comes around that has like a lot of talent gets kind of gobbled up by them. The endless commission cycle. Well, the uh, avatar creators themselves get the, you know, get the majority of the money. That's why a lot of the avatars kind of look the same and there's not a lot of variety. There's a lot of creators, but they all look the same because they all use the same people. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Maybe he's right. But one thing I am sure about is that a lot of things have changed since I started playing in 2017. Forget just how things look. I'm sure on the business side of things, there's definitely a lot that has changed as well. How have things changed since you started? Oh God, so much has changed. Oh God, so much. Everything changed. When I started, it was still kind of the wild west of VR chat. There weren't a lot of rules. Everyone just uh, found assets wherever. Yeah, oh my God, people, People have learned so much, like from the beginning, everybody seemed to use like MMD, but now so many people have created their own things. So there's a lot more artists. Basically all my friends back then, I think, had uh, at least one asset on their avatar that was not allowed to be in the game. I think everything from everyone that I knew was taken down, either for the uh, TDA stuff or just game ripped assets. If you don't know, TDA is an artist that made a bunch of Miku Miku dance models. We've, we've slowly, uh, as a as a community, learned uh, about copyright, <laughs> selling things you have a right to sell. Before, people would be more into using ripped assets from different games, like uh, The Sims, GTA, IMVU, all of those type of games. And now you don't really see it anymore because there's so many good creators that makes good assets. There was like a big change in the community where it went from like using game rips and like, I guess, illegal assets 
to make avatars or whatever we can scrap from the internet to like only community made scratch stuff which is a very good change back then it was really really easy to sell a lot of shitty stuff and get a lot of money you didn't have to do anything you didn't have to give them the package all you had to do was give them an upload and maybe if you're lucky they would let you have a free recolor nowadays people expect the avatar to be cool clipless non-copyrighted materials there's a whole bunch more strict and it's a whole bunch more complicated the biggest thing that is different now is that the quality of assets that people are creating now is a lot better than what it used to be yeah the expectation of quality i think as more creators mature just better equipped they're they've been exposed to a lot more tutorials and when you know certain avatar creators put out these like feature heavy avatars you know that naturally sets the bar even higher like people naturally expect what's the next thing what's the next big feature i think it's better for the consumer now than it's ever been since you have so much more choice and a lot of people follow a lot more standards avatars being 3.0 like I started on 2.0 SDK. That was way, way, way simpler and easier to work with. Avatars used to be capped at 20,000 polygons. You had to do a, a lot of stuff to get it to go higher. You were pretty much tied to four totals. That's, that's all you get. You can't have more. <laughs> Didn't have questies. So just avatars were a lot, lot simpler to make and like easier, I guess, because they didn't have much on them. Things have changed a lot. Clearly, we're past the days of desktop knuckles, but even with things changing for the better over the years, there has to be problems that still exist. What are the biggest problems that you think people aren't really addressing in the creator space? There is a lot of male avatar creators or just like very more realistic models or just newer models in general that they never check their models before they sell them or upload them. So I've seen so many people walking around with their vertices inside out. They've been missing an eyebrow, they've been missing like parts of their clothing. But when they turn the shade around, it looks great, you know. But it's so many things that they should have checked. First thing that comes to mind is like gatekeeping, I guess. A lot of creators like to gatekeep their stuff. People should be more open with their creations and share more. Like if you have some cool logic on your avatar, help people like they're struggling with that logic, like tell them how to fix this and that and just don't tell them like, oh, it's, you know, it's easy, just do it and all. I think the biggest problem in the creator space right now, there is such a disorganized TOS thing among people. Everyone has their own idea of what should and shouldn't be. And if everyone had like a uniform idea of what a commercial license is, That'd be perfect because right now certain uh, creators have it so you can only have a certain number of assets and some you have a price floor some have a price ceiling so you can't charge too much it's just all crazy there'd be some creators that like you know keep cash avatars and then of course they have to put credits in their page what usually people do is they like they credit certain parts of the avatar and then they just put a bunch of links of the creator but they don't like directly show you where they got it they just or oh, here's like a link to their store. They're like they don't link the product itself. It's either either them being lazy or it's gatekeeping. I think people should be nice to creators. A lot of them struggle with a lot of things. I make this content, you know, partially because I enjoy doing it. Uh, it's fun, but also partially to to pay bills. You know, put food on on the table. So just be nice and remember they're just people too. And maybe people should be a bit more careful with feedback because a lot of creators I know are hard work and we're perfect Sony thing. There's a lot of creators that put tons of time and effort into an avatar. Some spend months, you know, tweaking things, making sure it's absolutely perfect before they put it out. And then within a, a week, within a day, sometimes it's being distributed for free. Yeah, I would say just be nice and careful, like to everyone. I guess just creators not being professional, I guess. It stems from how creators kind of currently interact with their users. And it's unique to VRChat because you're not you're not going to interact with a, the CEO of Apple or someone at your favorite store or something, but you, you can interact with a creator. And so I think because of that events, Discord servers, there's this buildup of parasocial relationships where users or customers feel like they're almost friends with these creators that they can interact with them directly and i've seen that lead to some really awkward interactions where they kind of forget that this is a person first and then their business second and you need to like separate the two and they may not want to interact with you in that way necessarily while they're in the game conversely i also think creators sometimes forget that they're representing their brand they don't take like this making avatars and assets is like a, a serious job and so they treat others like they're treating others 
friends in VR chat. They don't necessarily show tact or, or they're not saying the correct things or they, they wield their platform recklessly and say things to however many people might be within their server. And, you know, I think they need to be cognizant that yes, people see them as a creator, but they're also a brand and they also have influence. I can't say that we don't have issues right now. We always will have them. But honestly, it's so much better. I feel blissful right now because in the past things were much worse. Right now, I don't, I don't know what the community can do to be better. The solutions for these problems are entirely up to the creators because the cause for these problems are also on the creators, made by the creators. Maybe not all of them, but most of them. But problems are problems, and if problems build up, the whole thing can come tumbling down. This game might not last forever. No, I, I know it won't last forever. Nothing is forever. Do you have any plans for creation after VRChat? Because VRChat might not be around forever. And do you think it's important for creators to, to think about that? Absolutely important to think about that. I think it's definitely important to like think about what you can do if this thing happens to fail. I do think about it a lot. I think they should have some ideas or I wouldn't focus too much onto it unless you feel like you can't stick to VR chat. I wouldn't say it's a very important thing. VR chat is not going anywhere. If you look at Second Life or IMVO, you'll see that they're still here. A lot of my plans sort of factor in that I can't do this infinitely or indefinitely, I should say. It's been great, but like I said, it's, it's changed a lot since I started. There was a Wild West in the beginning. There was a lot of money to be made there. There weren't as many creators, not as much competition in the market. These days, there's a lot of competition in the market. I think it's really important that creators not make this their main job unless they're really successful. It's kind of dynamic. It's potentially volatile. I don't know what changes VR chat can implement in the future that may completely turn the market upside down or change the way in, in which I create stuff. No, I don't think anyone should have only one source of income. And being an artist is a very complicated thing, even 3D. We're seeing the rise of AI. So Maybe it's gonna reach us. I'm not treating this as a potential career. It's more of like a creative outlet. People really should have a backup plan. Like I have a finance degree myself. My plan from the beginning was to focus on Blender, focus on 3D modeling. I have a, a business with some friends and it doesn't have anything to do with VRChat. VRChat is my hobby. The plan is to be able to 3D model, get those skills good enough I could go somewhere else or freelance for some other other platform. There's a lot of animation companies and game companies that would love to have 3D artists, but also you shouldn't really think too much about it. Realistically, this is going to be very hard. Being your own boss is very tough. I personally, I don't have a huge plan to be honest. I have some vague ideas, but like nothing specific, I guess. I also live in the moment and I like to believe I'll stick with VR because I love VR and I like to what I do. But so hopefully, even if things change, it will I'll still find a way around to make things for people. It's always in the moment right now currently no I, d I don't really think of that but when it comes to that time most likely yeah i'd probably move on to something else i don't know what it'd be it could be another thing like vr chat could be something beyond if vr chat does ever die there will always be a clone like this type of social game where people get in vr and there's a lot of friends and stuff uh, if VR, if anything happens to vr chat there'll just be a clone someone will make a clone and people move on to the other game we're reaching a point where avatars are getting more and more complex i just hope we keep being artist based place because right now it's artists that make avatars and not shop owners that make avatars if you know what i mean don't worry too much about the future live in the moment that's the only advice I feel I can give, because if I think about my future, I'll be filled with so much stress, I'll, I'll pop. And stress isn't good. When you're stressed, you're irritable. And working as a freelancer, a creative, is stressful. Irritable people cause problems, cause drama. Maybe you've seen some of the drama this game causes. I've spoken briefly about it in my VR chat content creators make me want to rip my head off video. But drama seems to be everywhere in this game. So from an outside perspective, it seems like there's a lot of drama in the creator space. Is that true? Do you know any drama there? <laughs> <laughs> there's. Of course, there's where there's people, there is drama. Oh yeah, that's definitely right. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of drama. Absolutely, there is so much drama. Everyone has their own problems. I have seen a lot of it. I've never really been a part of it. I have witnessed a lot of it myself. It's really not pretty at all. I've had it maybe two, but it was personal. 
you know? Not really. There was some, but at the same time, I know I try to not focus on it, so... It's, it's funny you say that you said there's a lot of drama. I don't think there's a lot of drama. It's just if you put yourself into the drama, then you feel like there's a lot of drama. But if you're not, if you don't surround yourself with the drama, there's like no drama. I am staying far away from all of them. It's everywhere. Any community, anywhere you go, there's always going to be a side of drama. And it depends on if you want to be around that. You find people who are not into that, then your experience for VR chat would not be filled with drama. Of course you have like the drama what that is actually like understandable like if someone f***s up and someone does something wrong i understand that uh, but then also unfortunately the piaccia community is doing a lot of he said she said and they don't really make their own opinion about anything i think there's a lot of socially inept people that use vr chat as a way to talk to more people a lot of those people or some of them may go on to be asset creators and they're still socially inept and they get into arguments with people that are needless. So I don't necessarily think it's because it's creators. I think it's just because VRChat as a whole is kind of socially awkward. The small bubble community compared to, you know, 7 billion people in the world, 8 billion people. At the end of the day, this is a this is a heavily social game. There's only so many people that play this game. We're all pushed in this small space. And with that, you have a clash of personalities, people with egos people with a lot of pride. There's a lot of toxicity because it is the internet. It's a social game. It is a very overglorified, pretty chat room with games in some worlds that you can play. And so what ends up happening is conflicts merge or even just like small quarrels within a creator clique will form over the, the simplest of things, but they will spiral out into overall damaging sort of scenarios. But there has been moments where people would accuse or like talk shit about you just because of the way you make your avatars, for example. People accuse each other of things. Oh, you stole my idea. Oh, I was making this and you're making the same thing. The assets you use if you're copying other people, like if you use the wrong hand, gonna be like oh that looks like this person's model it happens we all see the same assets go up on the store at the same time we all see the same posts on pinterest i definitely think it's just people in general people in general just like love drama could be anything social there's always gonna be drama whereas people there is drama and like you can't avoid that if you just do your own stuff you treat people with respect you don't necessarily incite any sort of conflict or stir the stir the pot so to speak i think you'll avoid 99 percent of the drama in the creator space good advice Let's stay away from the drama. There is a general opinion with creators that there isn't enough communication between the VR chat team and creators about what's allowed, what's supported, and what's not. And the only connection between most of these creators and the VR chat team is Tupper. Why does everyone hate Tupper? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't really know Tupper personally. I have nothing against Tupper. Like, I don't know why everyone hates him. I haven't really interacted with the man. I've only met them for like two seconds. I think Tupper's funny. I don't know. I ran into him once and the conversation went okay. I wasn't a part of it, but I was listening to it. I don't hate Tupper. I don't care. People just hate Tupper because he's very vocal about his opinions. He has, he has strong opinions, very vocal about it, and he's like yapping on Twitter and stuff. He's just like, I guess, because they think he's the face of VR chat. It seems like he's just getting a lot of people memeing on him. And he's like, he's easy to point at. Like, if there's anything wrong, he's like, people just point at him because it's easy, you know? Topper is the community leader, right? He's the person that addressed the public. So, of course, all the hate is always going to go to them. Something went wrong, oh, it's Topper because he's the, yeah, he's the social, what is he, social community manager? As a mouthpiece for VR chat, anytime there's a questionable change on their part, an update or something that's on the roadmap happens and they speak on it, people are going to hang on their every word. Like, that's their job. They're supposed to take on the hate and transmit the message. Something doesn't line up with something they said months ago. People just go out of their way with pitchforks and fires to like, you said this and you didn't make good on that promise. But uh, Topper is not a bad person, actually. Uh, he goes, I mean, he plays VR chat. It's like a combination. Easy to point out. He's like loud mouth, always have strong opinions, you know, yapping away. I, I personally don't hate him. I think he's, he's chill, I guess. He's funny. Do you even know who Topper is? Topper. Um, sounds familiar, but no, I don't remember. Breaking news, breaking news. VRChat developer Merlin fired over miscommunication? I don't know, really. Also, it's not really breaking news. This happened a while ago, but... Anyways, this story is confusing as not all the facts were brought to light before the man in question was made to 
delete everything. But looking over the only info that I was given, being a Discord post that was screenshotted, the man lists that there were disagreements over how VRChat treats its devs. Big shocker there. But hey, to all the people who say there's not enough communication with the VRChat team and creators, no, you're not alone. There's also not enough communication with their own staff. I'm, I'm exaggerating. Don't, don't come after me, please. And that's it. There's no more questions I asked. So thank you to all who took part and hopefully you learned something. And if there's anything I hope you took away, it's that these avatar creators are just people like you and me. Anyone can make avatars. And the process of doing so is just like any other market once you get the full picture. And if you learned nothing, I hope you at least got some good XP while skilling RuneScape in the background, you degen. But you, keep doing you. Do you have anything you want to shout out or plug? All right. So my friend Boom. What's going on? Jinxie. Blinks.gumroad.com or Jinxie slash Blinks. Um, Googie. Googie.gumroad.com. The um, cupcake.store. Fuck. RumiAvatars.gumroad.com Yeah. CustomAvatars.com Virtual threads on gumroad.com I completely forgot who I know. Hey, if you want to see some of my work, go to FBT. I bet you a dancer in there has one of my bodies. <laughs> check out my work, it's Lawrence, but otherwise... Check out Daryl's other videos, they're pretty cool. Man, VRChat is a crazy world. Worlds. Should I do worlds next? <laughs>